So considering the vibration of the drum shell itself, uh, the drum shell tends to vibrate its most fundamental frequency is, is the shell vibrating in and out as if it's being compressed into a, an oblong shape and then back again and it vibrates in and out just distorting the shape of the circle. Um, so while the drum head is vibrating up and down, the, the shell is vibrating in and out. And it's interesting to know what, what relevance that frequency has on the sound of drums. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, just take a reading of, of this drum shell. This is a birch 13 inch ply shell. And uh, obviously the, the frequency of the vibration depends very much on those kind of things, the, the material of the wood, the weight, the density, the elasticity of the wood, the shape, uh, sorry, the size, the, the diameter of the shell, and also the construction method, whether it's ply or solid or in, in, in any other kind of construction form, obviously metal as well. So, uh, so I've got the shell here with all the lugs taken off just to take a reading of, of it in its bare shell form. And uh, I can do that with I drum tune. I've got the, a mallet here, and if I open up I drum tune just into the spectrum mode and take a really fairly gentle hit, There we go, we get a main frequency peak, the fundamental frequency peak, which is the lowest at 90 hertz. So that's the lowest vibration frequency of the drum. There's another peak there, just a bit higher up, 252 hertz. That's a harmonic, well, an overtone of that first frequency, because it doesn't just vibrate in one form, it vibrates in lots of different modes, like uh, all instruments do, like guitar strings do, like drum heads do. Um, so we see a couple of peaks, but the main fundamental peak is 89 hertz. And what's interesting now is to see how that changes as we add the hardware back onto the drum. Okay, so I've now got the drum shell and I've added three lugs to it. So one, two, three. I haven't added all six, I've added three, just because I want to see how adding a little bit of mass changes the frequency of the drum shell. So previously it was 89 hertz. We've added three lugs. Let's see what its frequency is now. Okay, so it rattles a little bit, but its main frequency has now come down to 79.5 hertz. So that's taken off 80.5. So around 80 hertz anyway. Uh, so it's taken off about 10 hertz of the frequency. So it's gone from being 89 hertz down to 79, 80 hertz just by adding three looks. So that's made quite a significant difference to the frequency. Okay, I'll add the rest of the looks now and see what difference that makes. Okay, so I've now got all six looks back on the drum and, uh, and now we can take a reading of its frequency with six, drum, six looks in place. So it was 80, 80.5 hertz last time. Okay, it's now come down to around 73 or 74 hertz. Uh, there's a little bit of variation, but that's because I'm, I'm hitting it with the mallet rather than allowing it to really vibrate smoothly. Um, but nevertheless, it's come down to around 73, 74 hertz. And remember that's now 15 hertz less than the frequency of the drum with nothing attached to it. So the bare shell was 89 hertz. With three lugs, it was around 80 hertz. And now with six lugs on it, it's at 73 hertz. Okay, so I'm just gonna add one more thing. I'll add one set of hoops and just see how much difference that makes as well. Okay, so I've now got the drum, it's got its six lugs on and it's now got the resonant drum head on. So what this has got, it's got now got the six lugs, it's got the hoop attached to it. And the hoop not only adds 
extra weight, but it also adds a constraint because that's a solid metal hoop. It, it's trying to stop the, 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 the circle deforming because it's really, it's quite strong material, it's metal. So, um, so that actually stops the vibration uh, occurring or at least attempts to. Um, so let's have a look at what frequency this gives us now with the hoop on and, uh, and the lugs. Okay, so the frequency has now gone back up a bit. It's now gone up the lowest frequency to 79 hertz and we can see some more frequencies have occurred now because actually now we're starting to add a lot of weight. There's now lots of things bringing different frequencies. Now again, like I said, those frequencies are dependent on the way the system is uh, constructed and how they interact with each other rather than just saying, well, this bit vibrates like that and this bit vibrates at another frequency. Once we add them together, they all find new frequencies. Um, and it's no surprise actually that with a constraint, so when we hold something firm, it tries to stop it vibrating. Well, that also encourages it to vibrate at a higher frequency. Um, and that's generally because we're, we're stopping some of the modes and we're allowing others to vibrate, but essentially uh, we're changing its sort of uh, capabilities to vibrate. Um, a good way to show that actually is with, with some drumsticks, uh, just, just sonically. If I hold a drumstick at, at one end and hit it, it makes a noise. If I hold the drumstick in the middle and hit it, it makes a higher pitch. So if I hold it at the end, low pitch, hold it in the middle, high pitch. That's because of where I'm holding the stick because essentially I've changed the length of it uh, from being this long to this long. So the vibration is dependent not only on the material, not only dependent on the uh, design and the construction, but also where, where it's constrained and whether it's got some mass attached to it. So all of that is related to drums, which essentially are a piece of uh, wood that's shaped into a, a circle. It's then got lugs and, and, and metal hardware attached to it. And that all changes the frequency um, of the drum itself.